Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 12, Chapter 5 War on the Horizon, Part 3. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the anime and manga series. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. When I stood up, Benamaru and Diablo realized that something was up. I was impressed at how quick they were to react, so I let them know what was happening. Seems like that Gadra's back, but something's wrong. Let's go check it out. Understood. I will remain here as a guard. Then I will escort Rimaru-sama. I'll rely on you. During important times like this, I could count on Diablo. If only he were always like this, then. Nope, never mind. Diablo was brilliant, but he seemed like two entirely different people at times. On that somber note, we headed to the room we had assigned to Gadra. As expected, we found him right there. Well, now I didn't have to worry about him because he was right in front of me, alive and well. Oh dear, I could already see the other side. The only people here, other than me and Diablo, were Adelman and the others. Ramirez and Veldora got here late but got back to work once they found out that Gadra was safe and sound. So, what happened? Well, during the Imperial Conference, I suggested that we do not go to war, as Rimuru-sama ordered. In spite of this, they are intent on moving forward. I already expected that, so I wanted to make a direct appeal to His Imperial Majesty Rudra as my last service to him. And then he said he requested to meet with the Emperor, which was accepted. Their meeting was meant to take place today. Gadra entered the Emperor's castle, only to be stabbed by someone. It had all gone down just moments ago, not even ten minutes had passed. Oh right, we gave you the resurrection bracelet. Yes sir, Ramirez Sama's power is marvelous. This bracelet saved my life. I was expecting something like this would happen, so I prepared a teleportation spell in advance. Seeing him safe now, I figured that might indeed be the case. That was quite the clever idea. If you were to return to the labyrinth, no matter how injured you were, or how close you were to dying, the resurrection bracelet would bring you back to life. Gadra's return and resurrection reaffirmed how useful Ramirez's power truly was. Even so, it was owed in part to Gadra's finesse to set up magic in advance. It seemed like he also passed this technique on to Raisin. I'd have to try this myself some other time. So, who attacked you? I didn't think there were that many people capable of beating Gadra, even in my country. He was always on guard, with thorough defensive magic, so I didn't think he would be slow to react even if taken by surprise. The thing is, I was attacked without detecting the presence of the culprit, robbing me of my chance to confirm the identity. I do have an idea about who it was, but it's very hard to believe. Stabbed in the heart from your back, huh? The assailant even managed to break through the defensive magic. It looks like they have someone with an intriguing technique. Even Diablo was impressed. That was how you could tell this opponent was not one to be underestimated. There was likely someone powerful enough to kill me in the Empire. Maybe he was the one who stabbed Gadra, but it was better to assume that there were still others. Gadra himself wasn't certain about his attacker's identity. He wanted to look further into it, so I decided to leave it to him. Well, I'm glad that you're safe. This just shows us that the Empire is strong. We must double our efforts to be careful in the future. Rimuru-sama is right, we can't get any new information now, even if we pushed our luck further than this. For now, we should be content with the information Gadra had obtained, nearly paying the ultimate price for it. With that in mind, I decided to question him a little further and thanked him for his troubles. From Gadra's story, the Empire was headed for war. They wouldn't publicly declare war against another country, though. To them, their emperor was the absolute authority, so they didn't acknowledge the existence of other countries. When the Empire invaded other countries, they always came fully prepared. That was why instead of a declaration of war, they would announce a recommendation to surrender. If the country surrendered, then great. If they didn't, then war would come. The Empire would give no mercy. You can't become friends with other countries if you're that annoying, you know? Worrying about that was useless, since the Empire never participated in any international affairs anyway. Then, my side wouldn't have to go nice on them. All we had to do was to settle this once and for all and cut off the root of the problem. Now that we were certain about the Empire's movements, we also switched to war mode. First of all, I set up a joint operation headquarters in the control room. Benamaru and Sue would always be on standby here. Sue still stationed his clones in several places so we didn't have to rely entirely on my Argos for reconnaissance. With Moss's help, we could get information with a high degree of accuracy. 
The concept of information warfare existed here, but no country's military conducted surveillance of enemy forces as thoroughly as ours. That's what Hanada and Gadra told me, so it's not me being presumptuous, okay? It's a hard fact. This footage is from the sky. Kufufu. This is created through Rimuru Sama's magic. It only uses a small amount of magicules, and the reaction occurs outside the atmosphere. Only few could sense this magic reaction, such as those with danger precognition skills like Ultra Instinct. Indeed, I've always been confident in my ability to sense magic, but this magic appears too natural for me to think it was being controlled by someone. Of course, even an archdemon, who may excel in magic but lacks experience, wouldn't be able to appreciate this masterpiece. How brilliant, wouldn't you agree? That goes without saying, this is really quite astounding. For some reason, Diablo started showing off my creation to Gadra with a smug grin. They were both in awe and Gadra was getting visibly excited. Sheehan. Understood. Since they were quickly becoming a nuisance, I ordered Sheehan to isolate them in a separate room. Once I had peace and quiet again, I got down to business. So now, all of the country's executives were gathered in the control room. Benamaru was the general. Hakuro was the advisor. Sue was the intelligence officer. Rigard and the chiefs of the three powers that support him, Rugard, Rigard, Rogard. Representing the women, we had Shuna and Lilina. There were also the unsung heroes, namely Rigger, Kaijin, and Kurabi. Vesta and Muir Miles served as consultants. Gobta and Gabal served as the commanders of their corps. Even Geld laid down his work and came over. I also called the three demonesses led by Testarossa. Diablo seemed to have done some self-reflection, so I let him join the meeting, too. He stood in his usual position, on good terms with Xi'an. Gadra and the trio also came to contribute their information about the empire. And not to forget, Masayuki, now called the moral support of the people, of sorts, showed up late. Wait a minute. Why am I the moral support of the people? Please don't say stuff like that. Come on. Oops, he really did just say that in front of everyone. For some reason, Gadra was staring at the two of us during our little exchange. Something must have been on his mind, so I decided I would ask him after the conference. And last but not least, our collaborators, Veldora and Ramirez. Beretta, Trainee San, and Cherries were also on standby in the corner of the room. There we go, that's everyone. I suppose it comes as no surprise why I gathered you all here today. We must discuss our strategy against the Empire. Benamaru and I came up with the outline of the plan, but I would also like to know what everyone else here thinks. Please express your thoughts freely. Yes sir. Everyone answered in chorus, kicking off the conference. Looking at the screen, you could see vast numbers of Imperial soldiers lining up one after another. Visible beside them were also large hunks of steel, rolling with continuous tracks wrapped around their wheels as they sputtered in loud bursts. Those were tanks. Wait, why do they have tanks? I hurriedly asked Shinji and the others and found out that the Empire was pushing for the development of modern weapons using the Otherworld's knowledge, science and technology. I felt like I was late to the party and frustrated about the fact that I didn't make them myself. The idea of a tank in this world of knights never occurred to me. We had built a train, meaning we were this close to making tanks, too. After all, their tanks weren't the only thing of note. They also had ships that flew in the sky. Are you for real? Having that kind of thing would make transportation a piece of cake. At that point, I realized that maybe I was getting too cocky. Perhaps I was being a bit optimistic when I assumed our air superiority. I had thought about developing that sort of thing as well, but dismissed it as impossible. It takes a lot of trial and error before a product is ready for practical use. So, we had to applaud the research and development team of the Empire, those guys were brilliant. But I must admit that I had a slight desire to capture at least one ship whole. After the war ended, I would try and develop a lot more things on a whim.